Ever since Biden assumed the most powerful office in the United States, the U.S. government is hell-bent on cracking down on gun owners. Whether it's the ban on ghost guns or the newly approved H.R. 1808, the actions of the incumbent government are not sitting well with the gun owners of the United States. Every action taken by the Biden administration and ATF around gun regulations is met with skepticism and doubts by gun owners. Hence, when the talks of the pistol brace amnesty broke out, it was given the same treatment. Gun owners of America declared in a statement, the Biden-Harris administration and the ATF are cracking down on your right to own a pistol. The upcoming amnesty registration rule for pistol braces will facilitate the banning and registration of millions of pistol braced weapons. The amnesty scheme would have serious repercussions if it goes into effect. Owners would have to provide personal credentials like name, phone number, payment details, and even fingerprints in addition to a serial number, model, make, and photograph of the weapon. And in case they don't, a hefty fine of $250,000 will be slapped on them with a threat of jail time as well. So let's break it all down and understand how it all started and whether the scheme is, in fact, a trap that is set by the ATF. Braced Pistol and ATF – A Brief History Braced pistols did not always receive the same attention. Braces became popular in the early 2010s and the ATF determined them perfectly legal in 2012. The Bureau concluded that the attachment of a brace with a pistol does not make a short barrel rifle, hence the owners don't have to register their weapons with the NFA. Later in 2014, the same findings were reiterated to the Colorado Police Department by the ATF. It stated, Certain firearms accessories such as SIG stability brace are not classified as shoulder stocks and thus, if owners are using them improperly, it does not constitute a change in design. Things changed in 2015 when ATF out of nowhere announced that the handgun stabilizing braces would be considered shoulder stocks, and owners would have to register them in ATF Form 1 by depositing the applicable tax. Furthermore, the ATF also stated that these weapons would be subject to an NFA regulation. Hence, in addition to complying with the NFA regulations, owners had to pay a $200 tax to get a registration stamp. SB Tactical and other organizations slammed the ATS for proposing the new regulation, citing it as a misinterpretation of redesign, incorrect and inconsistent with the statute in which the same regulation has been previously enforced. The ATF proposed a regulation in 2021 which classified braced pistols as short-barreled rifles. However, it had to be revised and was to be published in August of 2022. For reasons that are unknown to the public, the ATF pulled the revision back and announced that it would be published in December of 2022. So far, so good. Seems perfectly normal, doesn't it? Things took a turn when an investigative journalist discovered that the ATF had made a request to the government for allocation of budget to redesign their Form 1. It's a document that is used to register weapons that are regulated by the NFA. And what exactly is the redesign? Take a look at ATF's budget request. Due to upcoming amnesty registration of pistol brace weapons, Photos of weapons being registered will be required to prove the weapon does utilize a pistol brace in its configuration and will qualify for an amnesty scheme. Yeah, you heard that right. The ATF wants to create a new section in the Form 1 which would not only just include a serial number, make and model of the weapon, but also its photo. Essentially, the owners have to register their weapons by providing all the information they've already provided at the time of purchase in addition to pasting a photograph of the weapon. The gun, which was perfectly legal to own a few years back, has now become illegal and for no apparent reason except for the ATF thought so. How is the ATF tricking gun owners? On the surface, the ATF is giving a free pass to the owners to register their weapons. You don't have to pay the $200 fee, which seems great, but wait till I tell you that most of us are going to have to pay the fee anyway. In addition to making a section for the photograph, experts believe that the ATF also add a couple more options related to the description of the weapon. It would essentially be like Form 4999 that the ATF uses to determine whether the AR pistol is actually a pistol or a short barrel rifle. An AR pistol has to meet just four criteria to be classified as a short barreled rifle. It's quite possible that when owners submit their brace pistol registration, the ATF will run it against their Form 4999, and most of the pistols will classify as FBFs, which let us remind you are not included in the amnesty scheme. Now that owners have submitted their records, there's no way to take them back. Hence, the ATF can now send a letter to your address 
stating that the weapon does not meet the criteria included in the amnesty scheme and the owners have to pay the fee anyway. Furthermore, once the photo of the weapon is submitted, you can modify the pistol to comply with regulations that make it eligible for the amnesty scheme. Currently, there's about 4 million brace pistols in the United States, and the government stands to make billions if the proposed regulation goes into effect. Furthermore, the government will also have a record of gun owners along with their fingerprints and photographs of the weapon. The new record could be used to strengthen the infamous National Arms Registry, which albeit the government denies, but we all know it works. The bottom line is, ATF and gun owners have never seen eye to eye in the United States. But if ATF does what most of us are skeptical about, it would open a new chapter of conflict between the state and citizen. The concern of GOA are exaggerated, but they are not all wrong. The amnesty scheme could be the greatest deceit the US government has ever done with its residents. We took it upon ourselves to make you realize the gravity of this situation, but now it's up to you whether or not you want to register the gun's amnesty or not. We hope this piece has been helpful for you. Stay tuned for more videos, and until then, stay safe, stay awesome, we'll see you on the next one.